about another podcast uh, that I'm going to be producing, and this is called Cybersecurity for the C-Suite. And I'm excited to welcome the founder of Toss C3, Greg Hanna. Greg, what's going on? And this is going to be a very, very, very interesting topic because we've discussed this before that the C-Suite, uh, you understand them. You understand what they're going through when it comes to IT and cybersecurity, how they are concerned on a daily basis. And this is what you're going to speak about today. Uh, Neil, I'm so excited to kick this off. It's, it's, it's been in the uh, workshop, if you will, on the bench for a little while. And I'm really glad that, uh, you know, with your help, we've uh, pulled this off. And I'm excited to, to get started with it. All right, fantastic. Let's talk about your story and why you decided to do this podcast. Well, first, let me tell you, at Toss, you know, I help leaders of organizations, whether that be a business, a hospital, a law firm, municipality, a library, you know, keep their organization's data from being stolen and their reputation intact. And I'm passionate about doing this because technology done right really is very complex. And everyone that these people talk to is an expert. I mean, am I right? You know, who can you trust? Yeah. yeah. I mean, who can you trust? Right. You know, but you know, Neil, let me ex share with you how I got into this in the first place. You know, my dad, he was an electrical engineer and he worked for major aerospace defense companies like Raytheon, Litton Systems and Sperry Rand Research. You know, he even had patents. You know, unlike me, he was an amazing and brilliant guy. So, you know, my dad morphed into a career in the earliest days of the micro computer industry when I was around six years old. Okay. And I was always fascinated by technology, especially when he would take me with him to his office. Now, I remember he built one of the very first microcomputers, and that thing used cassette tapes to record the data back then. And these cassettes were actually made out of metal. And I remember him taking me to the office to one of his clients to install that thing. And, and this was like state-of-the-art cutting edge back then. I mean, this is back in the days when he'd take me to some of his clients, they would have these giant mainframe computers and, uh, you know, computers with punch cards and all that old equipment. And I remember one day uh, my dad programmed one of the mainframes to print a giant picture of Snoopy and the Red Baron just for me. And that was an amazing and great day. But, you know, if I fast forward five years to the Saturday before Columbus days, five years later, you know, my dad had bought me one of these little Cox airplanes. I don't know if you're old enough to remember, Neil, but it was a gas-powered propeller plane that was attached with a couple of strings, and you'd stand in the yard, and you'd hold the strings, and the, and the plane would fly in a circle around you that was determined by the length of those strings. Oh, I don't know that, but okay. You remember those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was so excited because, you know, my dad and I, we were going to fly that plane on Columbus State. And I remember the day before Columbus Day, that Sunday, my dad was out in the yard, you know, working in, in the yard. He was dug it up. He was planting seeds, you know, in the backyard. And I was just hanging out with him. And when he was done work, you know, we went upstairs. We had a nice cold cut supper with some chips. That was my favorite thing. And watched The King and I with uh, Yul Brenner on TV. Now, you probably also remember, Neil, this is back in the days when there was no Netflix. So you'd have to sit through commercial after commercial after commercial to watch the good stuff. Right. And the next morning, you know, I was so excited on Columbus Day to jump out of bed. I run downstairs to the kitchen. I wanted to fly that plane. And my grandmother was there. And that wasn't usual. And my grandmother told me that my dad was sick and he had gone to the hospital. No. Yeah. And um, I went to visit him and he was speaking with really labored words. And it was really difficult uh, for him to speak to me. And it was tough for me to see him that way because... You know, I knew things were really bad. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And, you know, soon after that, he passed away at the age of just 39. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It was tough. You know, but I tell you, that feeling of losing your dad, you know, that feeling that oh. everything could just come to an end, that feeling, you know, it's really guided me through my entire life and through all my decisions. You know, every single day to me, Neil, is precious to me. And, you know, the longer I live on this earth, and on the planet, the more appreciative I am for every single day and for the lifestyle that I've been able to create for my family as a top cyber expert, delivering the yeah. abilities to, to securely use technology, you know, to, to live more efficiently, to do better work, to get things done faster, and to be able to get real work done from anywhere 
so that you can enjoy that precious time that you have on the earth with your family without being stuck at the office, mired down in all that junk and details and busy works and fears of being hacked and ransomware that technology properly implemented can really free you up from. So when I got started in 1985, I didn't want to be away from my family or my dogs. You know, I just, I just needed to be mobile, be able to work from home, from my car, from my client's offices, you know, securely. But, you know, this is back in the AOL dial-up days. Things were a little bit different. So in yeah. 1999, years later, I bought my first data center and uh, built a cloud for me first, tried it out, pretty awesome. Then for my clients and the company, and it was pretty exciting. And today, the number one issue facing all of us is the threat of cyber terrorism, hackers, and especially ransomware. Now, today, Neil, I, I think I told you I own three data centers. Right, exactly. Yeah, I house thousands of users relying on my company, and I needed an answer to cyber terrorism and fast, and I couldn't sleep. So this goes back, I, mean, I want to say 2010. Okay. Um, tossing and turning every night, worried about my clients' data, their ability to work, and the liability that I was taking on. I needed an answer to the cyber terrorism ransomware fast. And every person I spoke with, every client I met with, everyone was worried about the same thing having their clients' data stolen and their reputation damaged by these nasty criminals, these terrorists and, and ransomware specifically back then. So in 2012, I spent hundreds of hours figuring this out with my team, millions of dollars. We finally cracked the code. And since then, we've helped tens of thousands of people work securely from anywhere without the threat of cyber terrorism and ransomware. So how does this apply, you know, to the guests, to my to my yeah. my audience. Well, you know, my guess is is that they want to push IT away because we've talked about this. It's confusing, and it makes really smart people not feel very smart. Right. Yeah. And you know, if if they're thinking, you know, we already made, you know, have an in-house IT staff. We already have consultants. It's outsourced. You know, I don't blame them thinking that way because most of my best clients thought the same way until you know they discovered three factors or so we talked about through conversations. And you know the first thing that you need to consider, uh, your internal and outsourced IT staff are extremely overtasked and busy with the day-to-day. -day. And believe it or not, security may not be getting the necessary attention to keep you safe that you need, especially right. if you have a smaller staff. You know, the second thing I'm sure all these guys are super busy and gals, you know, leading the organization, you know, and they may be delegating all of IT and cybersecurity oversight to a direct report. So they, they're not really on it, thinking about it, get their hands in it, like they delegated it, it's off my plate, don't have to worry about it, keep my fingers crossed, right? Ugh, it's a scary thought, but it's true. And, you know, probably the, the last or third reason is, you know, that they feel like they've spent so much on IT, I mean, it's it's probably one of the largest expenses in most businesses is oh, IT, and they don't want to spend a ton of cash on cybersecurity too, and that's that's where it comes down to. But you know, it's funny. I was listening to a podcast in banking, and they had the CEO of Bank of America. This is right before COVID, on, and they were talking about finance and budgets and so on. And he said he made an interesting statement. He said, you know, cybersecurity is the only line item on our P and L. It doesn't have a budget. It, it, basically, I'll spend whatever it takes unlimited to solve that problem. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it, it takes the whole thing down, everything. Everything yeah. goes. If you have a cybersecurity attack, you could lose everything, all your data, everything. And the IT keeps everything secure without oh, that. I mean, completely. especially a big organization. You lose your files, you lose all these different things. And these are the things that these guys worry about. But you said the concern you have is that they don't want to feel like they don't understand things. So they put it off. They kind that's of right. allow the IT professional in their organization to handle things. And that's not the best thing. And this is what this podcast is going to be all about. Breaking it down for the C-suite in a way that really helps them understand uh, cybersecurity and how the importance of IT and cybersecurity in their organization. Yeah. You know, my, my plan is we'll cover a stack of what, what I consider super valuable information 
including, you know, how they can keep their data from being stolen, you know, things that they should never do when trying to become invisible to hackers and cyber terrorists. And again, they're not going to be turning the screwdrivers, but they're going to make sure this stuff happens. And then three common mistakes that all organizations are make that will sabotage their success. And like we talked about, my goal isn't to make these folks technical experts in cybersecurity and IT, but I, I do merely want to help them understand basic concepts, arm them with the high level knowledge and information necessary to make sure that their team that they use is keeping the organization safe. And you know, I, we've talked about the processes and procedures we develop through enterprise business. Right. So the ones that we've designed are geared towards, you know, what they as a leaders, you know, care most about, which are, I would assume, the same three things: containing cost, increasing shareholder value, and minimizing risk. Right. These are the things that all leaders want to make sure. Yeah. I mean, this is great information, and uh, I'm looking forward to covering all this with you because I'm learning it. In your other podcast you have you have multiple podcasts you're a busy guy greg for sure and learning you know specifically things about it but right now for this is for the c-suite the decisions they make on a regular basis regarding it give me one example before we say uh finish up this podcast of where the c-suite people take make decisions regarding it and cybersecurity on a regular basis well you know one thing is that they're always concerned about is making sure that the data is safe and secure. Well, how do they know that it's safe and secure? I mean, one thing that I would teach them is to ask their IT um, staff, their outsourced people, hey, when's the last time that we did a restore test? And you know, do we have a regular schedule for doing that? And I'm not talking about just a single file, but bringing an entire critical server back online from zero, when's the last time we did that test? And I bet you 99% of those leaders will be met with a, a blank stare and a drop jaw when they ask their folks. Wow, yeah, no, most definitely. And, uh, and when that happens, what do you do? You always rely on your IT professional, and sometimes they're not trained in cybersecurity and your expertise is cybersecurity. So how many people do you got go back and say, okay, I'm gonna to talk to the CTO, or I'm gonna to talk to somebody in technology or something, or, or go to the IT director, and they just don't understand cybersecurity yet, they understand I, what IT is, they know what to do in their job, but they just don't understand the most important parts of cybersecurity to keep their organization safe. That's absolutely true. And, and you know what, they're so super busy, that even though they they know you know the answers to the questions you know that that I'll give the C people to ask the members of the C suite you know they're just so overburdened they don't have time to get to their plan they might create you know a five year plan and start working towards it but then they're just overburied you know the volume of of I want to say issues support growth that the IT professionals deal with always outweighs the amount of people that they have on staff or, or that they can outsource to assist with. Best place to find information is where? Yeah, just go to tossc3.com. Awesome. Tossc3.com. There's a lot of great information. Schedule a call with Greg today. And then they can, you can understand the, what's happening in your organization and about cybersecurity and what to look out for. And this podcast will do that. So I appreciate it, Greg, and take care. Thank you, Neil. All right, that was cybersecurity for the C-suite, guys. Take care, everyone.